Hi, I'm Maria Considine King, and I'm the Director of Practice Management at Commonwealth Financial Network. I'm joined today by Simon Heslop, the Director of Asset Management at Commonwealth. Simon, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Maria. You mentioned in your most recent market commentary that U.S. markets have experienced their worst week since the middle of 2010. Can you explain some of the reasons for that poor performance? Sure. There are several reasons. And I think first and most important is the uncertainty surrounding the U.S. debt ceiling conversations in Washington. It's pitted Republicans against Democrats, the Obama administration against Congress, and really created a lot of uncertainty for the equity markets. You've seen a lot of similar conversations surrounding Eurozone debt crisis, particularly focused on Greece, and with worries that debt crisis will indeed spread across other countries. Last but not least, we also had the possibility of a debt downgrade for U.S. AAA debt, and most recently, uh, unfortunately, that has happened and the U.S. has received that debt downgrade. Those are all very interesting, but they appear to focus on the debt markets. Why are the equity markets performing so poorly? Well, the equity markets hate uncertainty, and Washington clearly created substantial uh, uncertainty in the market. And also, when you think about the debt ceiling conversations, they focused around cost cutting and also the potential for tax hikes. And if we look back to 2008 from the market bottom, a lot of the uh, market rally was on the back of significant government spending and stimulus. So the market is somewhat concerned with withdrawing a substantial amount of this stimulus. Also, we see the economy weakening. We, uh, most recently, some of the economic uh, data has, uh, has shown a definite slowing. You talk about weaker than expected economic figures. And do you have any specifics that can help us put the economy into perspective? Sure. I think the uh, best number to look at is GDP. When we look at the second quarter GDP number for the U.S., it came in at 1.3 percent, an annualized growth rate. Um, <clears throat> when we look at that, it's substantially below analyst estimates, as well as below trend growth, which is more in the lines of the 3 plus percent. We also look at first quarter GDP, which was revised down sharply as well, suggesting that we are indeed seeing a slowdown in this economic recovery. I can't help but notice that unemployment remains stubbornly high. What are the implications for this on the economy? Well, unemployment is stubbornly high, and it's been a frustration uh, for policymakers, particularly on the back of a lot of the stimulus that's been spent. When we look at unemployment for July, although we added 117,000 new jobs, uh, which was above analyst estimates, uh, we saw an unemployment rate that's still sticky, above 9%, where it's been persistent for quite some time. Uh, it did edge lower slightly, uh, but not materially, so uh, jobs will weigh heavily on the economy. And they weigh heavily on the American uh, consumer and the psyche of the American consumer. We've seen consumer confidence edge lower over the last several months, which has impacted consumer spending, which has also put a negative drag on GDP. It's interesting that you talk about the slowing U.S. economy, but it seemed to me that the market may have ignored that altogether, given the enormity of the debt ceiling debate. The uh, market did potentially look past the economy somewhat and focused a lot on the uncertainty of outcome, uh, of the outcome in Washington. Uh, although it's sometimes difficult to discern what actually drives markets, um, I think that this time it was uh, predominantly the uncertainty, and perhaps it's time for the market to, again, focus and digest the economy a little bit. You continue to mention Washington in your comments, and we know that the U.S. has had a debt downgrade recently. How is this possible? I thought that U.S. debt almost had a guaranteed AAA rating. Well, yes, the U.S. did receive a downgrade recently by one out of the three ratings agencies, Standard & Poor's. I think this was uh, somewhat discounted by many in the market, just given the poor performance of some of the ratings agencies, uh, particularly in response to the credit crisis back in 2008. But as we think about it, uh, we, we look and see a measured response from the Obama administration, one of anger uh, and disregard for the credit agencies. We've seen the initial volatility in the markets, markets trading substantially lower on the news. So uh, all in all, not very well received, given the fact that the market had an expectation that the U.S. would remain a triple A credit to perpetuity. So what does all this mean for markets going forward? Well, I think you'll see heightened volatility. We're definitely seeing a spike in volatility recently. Um, we've seen gold break $1,700 an ounce for the first time in history. But we're also seeing oil decline. We're seeing oil de decline on the potential threat of a global slowdown. 
Um, so, you know, considerable volatility in the markets. Given that it's so difficult to predict where markets will go in the short run, what should investors be doing in this market? Clearly, the, uh, the favorite answer here is don't panic and try not to be reactionary. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, many investors tend to sell after markets have gone down. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times, we may buy after markets move higher. In other words, we end up buying high and selling low. So to the best of our abilities, I think it's best to keep that long-term posture, uh, keep a very disciplined investment plan, and where possible, diversify a portfolio to help to mitigate some of the inherent risk of investing. So what's your overall outlook for the markets going forward? Well, I still think we'll see this heightened volatility, and we could see a continuation of this bottoming process. But let's look at American companies. We've seen about two-thirds of all companies uh, who recently reported beat analyst estimates. Balance sheets are strong, and they've shown a propensity for strong earnings. Unfortunately, this is on the back of some of the employment numbers in as much as they're keeping their costs low and not necessarily hiring workers. But I think you'll still see some robust earnings for companies moving forward. Thank you, Simon, for joining us today. Thank you, Maria.